Hi, my name is Kate. I will am a text-to-speech synthesizer. I am here with Quiet Bob, who will be speaking with his artificial larynx. If this is the first time that you've listened to his channel, I'll explain what we're doing. Bob has no vocal cords, so he has no voice. He speaks with a device called an artificial larynx sometimes called an electrolabyrinx. Many people have commented that the sound of the electrolabyrinx is disturbing. Plus, when he speaks without it, there is no sound. That's where I come in. To give some relief from the metallic drone of the electrolabyrinx, I will be reading some questions that we've received and Bob will provide the answers. If he speaks without the device, I will read his lips and translate. Bob, are you ready for the first question? Yes, I am. Do you ever use a cell phone? Yes, I do. But it's difficult. First of all, the sound on a cell phone is not all that great. And I sound as if not, it's not exactly great either. So put the two together and you can imagine what it's like. For the person listening to me on the uh, phone, I probably sound a lot like that good old speaker at the drive-in McDonald's when you pull up on the side. What's the worst part about not having a real voice? I think the worst part is making people uncomfortable when they hear this metallic voice. Let's face it, it doesn't sound very realistic. Why don't you use this text-to-voice program all of the time? Well, it'd be nice to have a voice like that, although I'd choose a male voice rather than a female. But it requires a computer, and it requires that the words be typed. This way, with the electronic larynx, I can be spontaneous. Some of the words that the text-to-speech program <coughs> speaks sound funny even though the voice is more realistic sounding. Why is that? I can answer this one. My voice puts words together using various speech sounds, like the sound of an F or the sound of an O that you hear in the word auto. Sometimes, the program doesn't put the sounds together perfectly. For example, the word electrolabyrinx when typed as one word sounds like this. Electrolabyrinx. But, when typed as two words it sounds like this. Electrolarynx. Also, the pacing is sometimes a little off. On the plus side, I have some expression in my voice and Bob does not. That's true, my voice is either on or off. I can raise the volume or lower it, but I don't have any expression beyond facial expressions. Here are two questions that are similar. What do you do when you want to shout? Can you whisper? Well, dance the first one if I want to shout. I do this. Hey, can you hear me? If I want to whisper, I do this. Hey, can you hear me? I can adjust the volume manually. This is louder. This is softer. But, you can't really do that in the middle of a sentence. But it is helpful at times. Also, there is a separate pitch control. This is the female voice. This is the male voice. One of your other videos entitled Voiceless Isn't Speechless. Can you explain that? Sure. I have no voice. I can no longer produce sound with my bubble boards because I have no bubble boards. Pretty simple, right? I can, however, speak using the artificial larynx. And if I don't have my artificial larynx or it breaks, I can still speak. I can still form words. I simply can't make them heard. But many people can read lips. 
It's not ideal, but it's still verbal communication. If you come down with a bad case of laryngitis, you shouldn't try to whisper. That can further irritate your vocal cords, but you don't have to resort to writing or suffer in silence. Once people understand that you're mute, they will most likely try to read your lips, that is if you try to speak silently. But you need to be patient with them, and they need to be patient with you. Besides, we learn more when we listen than when we speak. If you have to hold the electrolytrinx against your throat when you want to speak, isn't this a problem? Are there times when you want to speak, but can't because you're using both hands? Yes. For example, when carrying two bags of groceries and someone asks me the time, they have to read my lips. On the other hand, sometimes this isn't a bad thing. If I'm using, if I'm nailing something with a hammer and I strike my thumb, I can't hold the electrolarynx. No one hears me say. He said, oh, bleak, bleak. That hurts like a bleak. That's about all we have for this session. If you have questions or comments, please email them to us. We'll do our best to answer them. And remember, if you have a goal, don't let anything stop you. Be well.